Hi everybody, welcome to Art Your Truth, my first video in my Christmas in July series. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this cute, adorable snowman. So I start with a recycled, uh, from a, I think it's packaging, um, card, and I'm using the uh, matte gel medium to adhere a jelly print I did today and unfortunately um, I don't have that recording I have probably about seven other recordings of seven other pages that I did but for some reason I can't find this one I don't know if I forgot to hit record or not um, but I did so here I'm, I'm applying the the uh, gel medium to the outside to further uh, adhere to the card and that brush I'm using it's called a rubber brush and I got that from Hobby Lobby I use that brush for a lot of things it is very very handy so I've got that glued on and I'm gonna cut that off now something new on this video that I'm doing is whenever I uh, use a color or a different brush I'm putting it down in the lower left hand corner of the video so you can see that I'll also make sure to um, add that information uh, to the description as well so here I am using the Dina Wakely uh, white acrylic paint and the uh, flat shader brush it's a number six and drawing two circles making a snowman and I have no idea how I manage to draw a circle like this not lopsided um, even on video so I have proof because all my circles are always so lopsided so it's one good thing I guess that's happened on this video So typically I would put uh, gesso down before I put down a white paint, but Dina Wakely's paints are really, really nice, heavy paints, so um, it does a, a pretty good job of coverage. And I've added some snow down at the bottom. Now I'm going in with black paint. I'm going to create the uh, hat. So I decided that my snowman was going to be facing to the side a little bit to the to the right if you're looking at the picture where he would be facing to the right so I've got the hat and I'm putting it towards the back of his head just drawing a square and putting a round line about around the bottom and that's his brim so when you're using paints especially the same color you just draw what you see um, you don't have to worry about the shading just yet Then I went to go ahead and put the charcoal in and realized, whoa, my brush is too big. Um, so I'm getting a new brush and then decided maybe I should wait to do the charcoal pieces until I get the shading done on the snowman because I wasn't sure if maybe the eyes were going to go over um, where the shading was. So in this video, I've also included a light source arrow so it can help you see where I'm shading and or why I'm shading where I am. So the light source is coming from the upper right. The back half of his body is going to be shaded. So I'm just following the, the circle of, his, of the snowman's body and I'm adding some elephant gray. It's another Dina Wakely. It's a light gray. And another thing that I do is whenever uh, two objects meet each other, I like to shade. So you'll see I shaded between the head and the body and I'm shading at the bottom. And all the things that I'm telling you, they may not you they, they may not be the right way to do things, but that's how I do it. So please forgive me if I'm telling you something wrong. Uh, or if there's a better way to do it, I'm sure there is. And if there is, feel free to comment. Um, so I'm using the same gray to highlight the hat. So again, using the arrow, it would be the top of the hat and the front of the hat and the brim of the hat. 
that are highlighted. So now I'm grabbing a small that using that smaller brush and I'm just going to um, let the brush do the work and put a few squares in there. So three buttons and then I'm putting the eyes towards the front of the face to the right of the face because again he's turned to the right a little bit. I'll be putting the mouth in. Again it's going to go because he's turned to the right it's going to go all the way to the edge of his face and that last charcoal is a little bit smaller because my assumption is since his face is round it's you're not seeing the whole piece of charcoal so I made it a little bit smaller. I'm using the elephant gray and I'm shading behind the snowman and again where his body meets the snow. Again it might not be right it I might not even be explaining it right but that's just how I do things is wherever you know the body meets the snow another object meets another object I like to shade so I am now grabbing my brown paint and a much smaller bra brush around brush number zero and I'm going to create the arms so you'll notice that I created the arms inside the circle um, typically if, if your snowman was facing you directly you would just basically draw it from the side the, the line or the outside of the circle out but because he's his body is turned I'm assuming that his arm is coming out his body not the side so on the other side I am drawing it from or painting it coming from the outside of the circle because I can't see that side where it's actually coming out of its body. Gotta love acrylic on acrylic because you can just wipe off your mistakes. So I went in with the medium brown and now I'm going to come in with the darker brown and I'm going to do the shading. And I'm going to have that arrow come in so you can see where the light source is. So opposite of the light source I am shading. So that's under the stick, that's under the twigs. And you can, Sorry for the lighting again, you can't really see it. Um, but yeah, and then once again following the light source I'm creating the shading on this stick. So typically when I draw objects like this and I want to make it look three-dimensional, I start out with the medium color, draw in the object, and then go in with the darker color and put in the shading, and then take a lighter color, and on the opposite side of the shading, I put the highlight. So here you'll see me highlighting the opposite sides of the sticks and the arms um, with the lighter brown. I have Christmas music playing. Okay, so that's his arms. Oh, another thing. You'll notice I use the caps as a repository uh, for my paint. Um, I don't squirt it out onto my surface and dip from it. I just dip from the cap. This way I'm not wasting anything. And once I'm done, I just put the cap back on. So now I'm taking the uh, Dilutions paint. I think it's called Tangerine Dream. And I'm creating the nose. And it's not coming straight towards you. It's going off to the side because again, he's turn to the right a little bit so yeah so now I have pure sunshine and just adding a little highlight to the top of that carrot giving it some dimension so I forgot to um, add the shading 
um, for the sticks, the arms, and, and the charcoal. So that's what I'm doing here. You'll see the light source comes in again, and I'm basically just adding some of that gray on the opposite side of where that light source is heading. So it's the left and the bottom. So, um, I'm going to be adding the red scarf, or, oh boy, I don't even know what they call that thing, the red thing around the hat. Um, I used this red for my jelly printing earlier, so um, that's why it's squirted out, otherwise I would have grabbed the cat like I usually do. And if you look here, you'll notice I follow the contour of the brim. So now it's it's a, not a straight line, it's a curved line. So that gives you the implication or indication or mm, perception that that is a round hat by doing the curves. <clears throat> and same with the scarf. So um, I'm bringing the, I'm flaring out the ends basically of the scarf to go to follow the contour of the head and the body um, to show that it's, you know, going around a circle. It's giving you that illusion. That's the word I'm looking for, illusion, that um, his head is round and his body's round. And just chose the spot and decided that's where at the end of the scarf is going to come out. And again, you'll notice I'm not drawing a straight line for the scarf. Um, I'm assuming the scarf is laying on his body and his body is round. So I'm curving that scarf um, to give the illusion that it's going around the round body. Same with the other side. If I would have just drew a straight line, then it wouldn't give you the illusion um, that his body was round, three-dimensional. So now I'm coming in with a darker red, and I'm shading. Here's my light source again. I'm shading in the back, the opposite side of the light source, and then there's a knot right there. So um, where the knot overlaps the other pieces of the scarf, I'm darkening that in with the darker color. So I guess another way to put it is instead of drawing, you know, an outline in black, I'm just using the darker red to indicate where there's overlap and
simple holly a line and you know kind of creating a, a feather a tiny feather and it looks like holly I'm gonna dip my bottom of my brush into the red hot and create a berry and that's the holly so now I'm shaking up my Dina Wakely gloss spray and this is my favorite way of, of creating splatter um, her paints are so opa opaque and they're already liquid so I don't have to add water or anything like that so I take my fan brush I dip it into the bottle I wipe off, wipe off the excess and then I just start flicking and this is a tiny it's not a tiny flat brush but it's a smaller uh, fan brush so you'll see that the specks are pretty fine with a couple that are a little bit larger and that's what I was looking for I wanted to give the illusion that it was kind of snowing outside I'm gonna dry those that snow before I start doing anything else because typically I forget to dry it and then I end up smearing all the snow and it looks like uh, a blizzard a slushy blizzard whoa okay so now I'm going to take my black Posca pen and I'm just going to create a frame around this I like to create a frame uh, around if I have if I have a singular object or even if I have multiple objects I do like to create the frame because I feel like it directs the eye to look within the frame right so it, it creates an emphasis on the snowman itself which is kind of strange isn't it it would be the opposite you know you draw a black line around something people would look at the black line but um, now basically by drawing a black line around it you're creating emphasis um, on the snowman so now I'm going to use the Karen Birchall technique with a angular shader brush um, it's basically you dip your angle brush in some water and then you dip the very tip of the angle brush in paint and you put that tip up against the edge of that line and the paint will be thick at the line but with the water in the in the brush and the angle brush the paint diffuses out so you get a nice detail line at the tip and then it diffuses out so it's not so harsh and <clears throat> I will have a link um, to this technique in the description so you can get it straight from the horse's mouth on how to do it because I'm sure I'm not explaining it well it took a while to get used to this or to do it right and I still screw up I still you know put my brush too far in the paint and end up with a blob or not enough and have to dip it in again um, it's acrylic on acrylic it's watered down so it's real easy to fix if you do make a mistake okay so I don't like I don't feel that the shading is enough so I'm gonna speed it up here and uh, go over it just one more time so then I said Hmm, I'm going to put this away, but then I decided I'm going to do the floating technique around the body as well because it's just what I do. I wasn't going to on this one. I thought, hmm, I just I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> it's just not complete um, and, unless you've got, you know, that shading around it, to me at least. Um, I think it's probably a, a, a taste or a preference on whether you like it or not but um, I like to have a uh, shading I, I'm not even sure um, what to call it but it, I think it makes the snowman pop out completely 
from the picture by creating this diffused, you know, aura, black aura around him. So we were just talking about um, how I'm still, still trying to perfect this. And I never will probably. Um, so here you'll see I, I went over the white line with the black paint, which it's not a big deal. Um, it is acrylic on acrylic, so it will come off. You just have to catch it before it dries. So I'm just going to finish up the shading. And then I'm going to fix my, my boo-boo. First, I'm going to try and use some water and kind of scrub it away, but it wouldn't, wouldn't move enough for me. So I grab the baby wipe, and of course, I touch other lines, and it smears, which makes me wipe it more, and then the white comes off. So that's okay. I just get some more white and fill it in. Do a little touch-ups here and there. And then add more, add that shading back in. And I'm gonna have a before and after of, you know, before I did the floating technique and after I did the floating technique to hopefully so you can see the difference of how that snowman sticks out quite a bit more. Um, so now I'm going to actually do the writing um, with the Sharpie pen. And this is sped up you, with the way I'm holding the pen and the, and the camera angle. You can't really see what I'm writing at, at the tip. So I've sped it up. It was supposed to be Happy Holidays with an S, but I ran out of space because I'm still figuring out this whole font and lining things up and all that other good stuff. So it's Happy Holiday. I think it's okay. And then uh, I'm going to ink the edges, which with especially with that um, floating technique finishes the card. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully you've learned a few things and are inspired to try this on your own. If so, please go ahead and uh, like my video or leave a comment and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye!